Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another Painted Dog Pack sponsored live safari here on the Ritzbait Game Reserve. Uh, we are here in South Africa, not far from the Kruger National Park, so a few kilometers or miles to our east and we are in a private reserve here. It is about 6,000 hectares which I, oof, I have to do my acres. It's about if you double it for the acres, let me check quickly. I think it's good to be accurate to these things. So 6,000 hectares to acres. My apologies. To acres. 14,800 acres. So it's a beautiful reserve. A combination of some woodlands and savannah. And so my name is Charles and on camera today we've got Ryan and on final control we have got Viem, my colleagues Ryan and Viem. Uh, so thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you haven't seen me before guiding um, and they're used to seeing uh, Brent and Gareth and other usual suspects and Andrew, I am filling in for them while they're out having a much deserved holiday. Got to give them a break so they can come back fresh and energized to come do their thing. And I am not a professional guide, I'm more like uh, you people at home. I love the bush, I'm a th bush enthusiast, and I work at Painted Dog TV in the background. I am very involved with the finances and the bookings of your amazing safaris that our brilliant guides put together for you. Um, so if you ever do want to go on a safari, and I'm not ashamed to say that a Painted Dog TV safari is a life-changing safari. It will alter your perspective on things and make you appreciate life that much more. So without further ado, let's head on. I've got my reference material here so we can all learn together. My Signs of the Wild by Clive Walker, uh, Sappy Tree Spotting, Trees of the Low Felt, and then Game Ranger in Your Backpack by Megan Emmett and Sean Patrick. Brilliant books these. And say hello to the pack. You can see me looking at my phone every now and again. And uh, not being rude, I'm looking at the messages from our pack members. And if you would like to chat directly with our guides, not only during the live virtual safaris, but also during our world's only live conservation events. So during the live conservation events, what we do is we go out and we, a lot of the time our pack help fund these operations where we go might rescue some wild dogs in a dangerous area or uh, trim the horn of a rhino to deter poachers, put colors and elephants, all these fantastic things that the heroes on the ground are doing for conservation. So if you become a pack member and you can find your link in the video description to become a pack member from $10 per month and you can cancel anytime you can go there and participate in those conservation operations as well. As I say, we are the only people currently that we know of doing that in the world, all thanks to your help and your support. And as we roll on here, we had some rain in the last few days. So all the territorial animals, what they'll do uh, during after the rains is go around and mark areas. And here we have a marking what I'm going to guess is a white rhino bull. So after the rains, he would have come along here and somewhere where he's formed a midden. You see there's a lot of dung around there, some old dung as well, all built up to the left. And he would have defecated there again, probably urinated and scratched and left all his smell and his hormones and all the rest there so that the other bulls would know about him. White rhinos are territorial. I'm not too sure of their, ho their ranges for the territory, but I do know that ranges depend on things like food dependency a lot. And perhaps the, the availability of females too, but perhaps we can learn that together. If we do some googling and check our reference material that you might have at home to see what is the size of a white rhino's territorial range. So, hello to our pack members. Thank you so much for joining us and everyone else in the public drive. Everyone, all your support means a lot to us and we really, really do appreciate it. We have Mary, of the pack members, we have Mary, Barbara, Carol, Rosemary, Di Everett, uh, Willow, and that's who we have chatting at the moment. I'm sure there are a few others in the background just watching and enjoying as we go along. 
It would be great if we could find one of these white rhino bulls. Magnificent creatures that stand as tall as six foot at the shoulder. And I was doing some reading in my brilliant Game Ranger in your backpack book on the white rhinos. And if you're charged by a white rhino, good luck out running it. Because they run at 26 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour in, in full charge. And that is very fast for such a hefty creature. I'm not too sure how much they weigh. Again, something we can learn together. Perhaps someone can pop in the chat there how much a rhino bull can weigh up to. I'm going to have a guess. Let's see how close or far off I am. I'm going to say two tons. Two tons of rhino bull. Connie has also joined us on drive. Hello, Connie. I know we have people all from all around the world. Yes, even on the public drive, you can let us know on the public feed. Let, let your other safari goers know where in the world you're watching from. All that wonderful sense of community, no matter where we might be. I'm heading up a road now called Le Mundur, and that is Afrikaans for orange thorn. I'm not too sure which tree around here is the orange thorn tree. We have some clouds around today and a lot of thunder in the distance. We're just going to hope that it doesn't make its way here. Otherwise we'll be rushing back to headquarters. But so far so good. It is a beautiful and pleasant um, afternoon. Thank Lovely and cool. I'll tell you the temperature in a moment. According to the weatherman on my app, it is about 28 to 30 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees in Fahrenheit being it is 82 degrees Fahrenheit and a little bit of a breeze to cool it down a bit and the overcast conditions as well, we can be very grateful for that. I have got my rogue hat just in case. Uh, Barbara Simpkins on the pack chat coming up with the stats there for us. Oh, we've got a beautiful raptor. Let me get young Ryan into position for that. I'm going to get my big hat out of the way. And guys, let's have some fun here. Let's see if we can ID this bird. You may hear some radio chatter about certain sightings, but as so often happens in the safari world, you can't go everywhere you please. So they do have a sighting of some rhinos on the next door property, but we're going to go look for our own. Okay, what have we got here? Uh, so Barbara was telling us, going back to the rhinos for a minute. Well, let's get back to that. This bird might fly, raptor might fly at any moment. Let's try and ID this. Hasn't got fur on his legs. Fur. <laughs> Hasn't got feather on his legs. <laughs> Feathers on his legs. So, not an eagle. I remember that from when I was very young. Some of the bush knowledge I have. Not necessarily bush. Global. And when I saw the beak there, it looked like it had dark tip to its beak as well. What color are those legs? There's a bit of a red tinge to those legs. Those scaly legs. Dark feathers, some nice stripes on its belly and its chest. Fine stripes. It looks like it had some red on the beak as well. 
So I think I do know which one it is. Let's give everyone else a bit of a chance to figure that out if they can. Beautiful bird of prey. A very distinctive dark tip at the end of its beak. Right, so it is, I believe, a dark chanting goshawk. Seen a number of those around the reserve lately. Beautifully silhouetted there in the the dead, what I'm guessing is a knobthorn tree. Oh, hearing the rumbling of the thunder overhead, so let's move on, just in case it does come down. And we miss out on some other fantastic sightings that might be around the reserve at the moment. Okay, so Barbara did the quick search. I don't know if it was in her reference material, the book she might have. I do know she's a keen wildlife enthusiast. So I'm going to guess to books from her shelf. And she found the weights of the rhinoceros. So the male, oh, let's see if we can get that shot up there. Kite doing its thing, floating beautifully in the air there. yellow billed kite up above. Okay, it's coming. Oh, stunning. Great camera work there, Ryan. Okay, guys, Grant, can you go west and come? So, Barbara, according to her reference material, it says males are 2,400 kilograms, so almost two and a half tons, I guess two tons. And then the females, 1,600 kilograms. Hefty beasts, those. Oh, and I see the lightning having a wonderful display on the mountains up ahead. The Drakensberg Mountains, or the Dragon's Back. can see some rain on the mountains there. Get Ryan to zoom in there, and that's quite, dra quite the dramatic scenery. I've located these two male cheetah just uh, slightly east of the Giraffe um, 76 Junction on Kaya. Um, about a one out of five sighting. And that is the entry, if you will, to the left of that to the Blyder Canyon. Now, we live in such a beautiful and diverse part of the world in South Africa, and what a privilege to be able to bring it to you all, wherever you may be. And the Blyder Canyon is the third biggest canyon in the world, behind the Grand Canyon in the United States, and the Fish River Canyon in Namibia. So what a privilege to be able to have the fault where we are with the big five and everything that comes under those umbrella species. Oh, it looks like we might be in for a treat here. Get Ryan into position. Two birds with one stone, so to speak. 
get you a nice angle. Hopefully we can get both of them in. There we go. Oh, the one has just flown off. We had there, you can see him flying off. We had two raptors there. The one that flew off is a yellow-billed kite. I'm not too sure what this is. But I noticed the technical term for its silhouette is it's Jizz, J I Z Z. According to my Robert's Bird app. And if anyone can tell what bird that is from the Jizz, much appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Let's carry on. Uh, Barbara was saying she got it from her Game Ranger book, the same one I've got in my vehicle here. Game Ranger in the backpack, brilliant resource. Had the privilege of having spoken to Megan, one of the authors before, potentially collaborating on a live camera on one of the properties for the company she works for. If you haven't seen them, we've got the Painted Dog TV live bush cams at various points of interest on this reserve, running 24-7. You can watch the animals coming by, doing their thing, unaffected by any humans, because they will be all alone out there. And we do our best here to unaffect, to not affect any behavior of the animals as well when we're out here on our game drives. So go search for live bush cams on YouTube, live bush cams, and you see the cameras there running 24-7. Also wonderful just to put in the background if you just feel like relaxing and hearing the sounds of the African bush live. Every now and again punctuated with some action or some animals on camera, be that lions or cheetah or mongoose, birds, wonderful bird life. As you can see, it's very lush and green where we are now in Southern Hemisphere, summertime, and we are uh, in a summer rainfall area, the South African low felt, very thick with grass and all the leaves and all the trees. It does make sightings a little more difficult and tracking for the keen track is more difficult because the ground is harder as you sure well deduce more difficult to pick up the see the animals through the thick bush but it is just so much so full of life all the insects and the migratory birds that come out at this time and all the plants and flowers absolutely beautiful oh, we've got a little antelope up ahead and give everyone a chance to try and ID this little chap a little male one you can tell by the horns on the top how cute and how beautiful well spotted Ryan thank you very much Oh, it looks like his one horn is broken off. Hear the thunder rumbling behind us.
Let's see if we can tell what kind of feeder this little antelope is, whether he's a, a browser, a grazer, or generalist, eating both, both leaves and grass. See the browsers eating leaves and the grazers grazing the grass. Ah, there we go, off the ground, some grazing. There, they are, there are shrubs there, so there might still be leaves. Something we can look up in our books. So it is a Steenbok. A little Steenbokki. Literal translation to English, stone buck. But I don't know if anyone calls it that. Steenbok seems to be the term used by everybody. And it's given that name from its mode of defense, how it hides from the predators, it keeps dead still. It's a fast little creature, I don't know how fast, but it evades potential predators by keeping dead still, and they often just walk right by it, not even knowing it's there. It was Stonebuck, Steenbok, S-T-E-E-N, there he goes. And he's off, as you can see, quick off the mark. Steenbok, S-T-E-E-S-T-E-E-N-B-O-K, Bok. Fresh rhino tracks here because I did drive this road this morning on the way back from the private virtual safari. Yeah, which is private virtual safaris. We have those just about every day. And I'll tell you more about them now. But let's look at some rhino tracks for a second. Love a bit of tracking and trying to identify tracks. So we have two tracks in shot there. We'll go a tiny bit wi wider there, or two down, and then we can get both of them in shot there, right? Perfect. So two rhino tracks. Let's see if we can figure out if these are white or black. I'll get out my tracking book in a minute. And also, in which direction do you think it's going? Excuse me as I lean across. So it's either one or two, of course, white or black rhino. And we'll have a look in my reference material here. And get yours out and let's try to figure it out because I know in the private safari, virtual safari this morning, we we're trying to figure it out too. Um, we didn't have quite as clear as this, tracks as clear as this. So, okay. Come across here. And this, what we've got in front of us here in the book is a black representation of a black rhino track. They say 20 to 25 centimeters long. Mm, 20 to 25 centimeters. And divide that by three, so it's usually three to get your inches. I'd say, I think this track from here to here might be a bit longer than that. But we have got all the, got the left toe, the right toe, the large front toe. Let's get to the white right now. Twenty to twenty-eight centimeters, so close. And I would say this one is about ten inches. So if twenty-eight centimeters is the maximum, and this one you can see it has got a little bit of a W at the bottom here in the representation. And then on the black rhino, just this oval, oval at the bottom of this of the black rhino track. And a little difficult to tell here. 
whether we've got an oval or a bit of a W at the bottom, but I'm going to judge by the size that this is a white rhino bull. That's going to be my guess. Lovely book, Signs of the Wild by Clive Walker. A book that has been in my family for longer than I have. And Clive Walker, the founder of the All Important Endangered Wildlife Trust. Been doing such brilliant work for so long. And why do I keep stalling? Mary saying that white rhino, which we concur here on the vehicle, and moving away from us, correct. Much like if you look at your own footprints in the sand, anyone you kind of you, you hook when you're going, so you'll be digging the front bits will give it a little bit of a, a lip. Or a, Slip in the sand, nip in the sand. So with the right rhino having moved in this direction, sometime today to keep our eyes peeled. For this 2,000, over two and a half ton beast. Beautiful beast who can run it. 26 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour. Much faster than you and I. Oh, so I was telling you a little bit about our live, private live virtual safaris, if you're unaware of those. So it is, according to an academic who has a PhD in document, wildlife documentary making, he was doing an article for a um, scientific journal on the evolution of wildlife documentaries. And he believes that the Painted Dog TV live virtual safari is the closest thing you can possibly get to the real thing compared to anything else out there so wherever you are in the world you want to have as close to a real safari experience as possible do join a private live virtual safari and what makes that different from this one is that our seating is limited so it's a maximum of 12 households or feeds if you will per live safari and so, which is very much like being on a safari vehicle. You won't have more than that on your safari vehicle. So we limited this. So everyone gets a chance to interact with the safari guide and get all your questions and comments through to the guide. And you chat to him or her, your professional guide in real time. So they'll hear exactly what you're saying and you'll obviously see and hear them and chat one-on-one -on -one. they can dispense all your knowledge and as I say the professional guides I do hop on occasionally like I did this morning but that's often with our our regulars who who quite enjoy a Charlie Safari and learning together so if you enjoy learning together with your guide Charlie Safari is for you too and send us an email at info at painted dog TV Book your seat there and inquire more. Or even better yet, download the Painted Dog TV app. If you don't have the Painted Dog TV app, you can find it on your app store for your smartphone. And there you can get all the tasty tidbits of Painted Dog TV and join the community, chat with other wildlife lovers share your photos and videos from wherever you're in the world because i think it is extremely important to embrace and enjoy your nature wherever you may be in fact i don't think it is i know it is 
you can share with us whatever you might find. It might even just be moth, beautiful moth that might have landed near your light one evening. You can share it with everyone. We can try identify it. Have a lot of fun on the app. Ah. We have up ahead the most numerous antelope in sub-Saharan Africa. A herd of impala. Some young boys there, you can see the ones with the horns. Wouldn't be, I imagine, too far away from moving out of the herd. Let's go form, form their bachelor groups. Start thinking about finding a harem or herd of their own as a adult male impala. They are the most numerous in Africa because they are generalists. They both browse and graze for their food, so leaves and grass, meaning that they have a lot more options. A few youngsters there in the herd. Or should I say young, younger than the young teenagers with their horns? There's a teenager. Barbara is saying, the only thing that you miss on a private live virtual safari with Painter Dog TV are the smells. Cannot recommend the drives enough. Thank you so much, Barbara. Well, sometimes you, you want to miss out on the smells. <laughs> but right now, the smells That's are lovely. Invisible in the last reported. And the whole herd of elephants were on Kuru North, heading down into the river. I'm not sure if they're still visible. Um, I will see to on the... Um, so the mountains we were looking at earlier well, that part of it in particular is completely enveloped by the rain now. Rain, rain, go away. Come back after drive. Keep an eye on that. Because if it comes down, it looks like it's going to come down in buckets. We'll head fast to our, to the east, where we are pointed right now is to the west. But we are bumbling along slowly here because it's a beautiful open area. And with those rhino tracks, those fresh ones, we'd be amiss to not drive in this open area. Hopefully catch a glimpse of this beautiful beast. Big rhino bull, we believe. White rhino bull. Of the tracks that we saw. Ah, let's get a safety shot here. We've got a different species of antelope up ahead. Let's see if any of the fundies. South African word fundi, meaning students. Any of the bush students, fundies out there? Can identify those for us? I know which those are, but let's have some fun. 
What have we got there? They often get confused with another antelope out here, which you see less frequently than this one, this beautiful lady in front of us. So the one closest to us is female. Another one with it is a young male. There's another one. Party of three. Apologies for the the um, tree in front of us, but I think if we go closer, we're going to scare them off. We got a lovely sighting here of these beautiful antelopes. So these got some guesses coming through here. Mary of the pack saying, "Are they Miala?" Question mark. Sue saying Nyala as well. Hello Sue, Sue Guy, the mother of our lead cameraman Matthew Guy. Sue down in Cape Town, South Africa. Matthew's also from Cape Town, but we'll forgive him for that. Only teasing. Mary and Sue, you are correct. It is, they are in Nyala. But the one, I think it's the one in the middle at the moment, is a young male. So you'll see he's got small horns on him. If we get a chance, from, if he pops his head up again, we can see that. You can see the tuft starting to grow, but become a bit more pronounced on his back. Because he will change color a lot. He'll become a lot darker. And you get beautiful spiral horns. Now he's a youngster hanging out with mom, looking a lot more feminine. Hanging out with mom and aunt. So we've got another auntie, or is it another youngster? There's four of them here now. See what happens when you just sit and relax sometimes in the bush, you get treated. You animals coming out to you. We had that yesterday, a brilliant bird sighting on the private live safari of an African pygmy kingfisher. And if you don't know what that looks like, an African pygmy kingfisher, I suggest you look it up in your reference, whether it's your app or your book, or even go Google search it. It is an absolutely stunning bird, possibly one of the most beautiful I've ever seen, if not the most beautiful I've ever seen. Yeah, the Hawkeye of Ryan spotted that again. Ryan on camera. He's got great eyes for the bush here. <laughs> Looking up every now and again just to make sure we aren't a threat. If we come within closer distance, I reckon they might push off a bit. Now the thunder is rumbling directly overhead. Sue was asking earlier, if the horn breaks off, do they regrow new ones? And very wisely, Mary there, I think the antlers grow back, horns don't. I think that is correct. Horns do not grow back, but the antlers do. And that blows my mind that those very spectacular antlers that you, on the animals you get up north, I'm mistaken, they shed them each year and they grow back. I can't believe they grow at that rate and that size. Thank you, beautiful Inyala, for a fantastic sighting. So the book, the book, the back, antelope, they are often 
confused with is a bushback. So a bushback has very similar coloration and even shape. Size, I'm not 100% sure. I think a bushback might be a little smaller, but I do stand corrected on that one. And how you can tell the difference between a bushback and a female... Um, the female Nyala is that the Nyala has stripes, whereas the bushback is kind of like white paint splatters on its side, if you will. It's like someone's taken a paintbrush and like flicked doubles of paint on it. And that is a bushback. I know a bushback is my colleague Brent Leo Smith, guide extraordinaire. Much like the other guides we have here at Painted Dog TV, Mr. Gareth Poole, outstanding world-class safari guide. So if you want to go on a safari, I cannot overemphasize how much having a private guide on your safari will raise and elevate that experience. It is Brent's favorite back, a bush back. Why, you might ask, would a private safari guide elevate your experience? Why not just have the guides at your disposal at the lodges you go to? Well, it's a little bit of a... With all due respect, and there are amazing guides and trackers out there at the lodges doing their residencies, so to speak, and that's where every guide starts, and some remain out of choice. So, but with a private safari guide you know what you're getting you know the standards and private safari guides have been through their paces done the hard yards so to speak I know Gareth's got over 12 almost 13 years experience and Brent has been guiding for over 20 years now since his late teens and they also know that when you go from one destination to another what you have seen what you're itching to go see and they re really curate your experience to you and they know in all the tricks of the trade to be able to figure out what is the best thing for you on this safari experience. So I have going to report that it is raining at Hayes. And so what we're going to do, and Hayes being our headquarters, which is a little southwest of us now, we're going to, and I must warn you, if it does rain, we do need to head back and quite swiftly because while we are waterproof, my colleague and I, our equipment is not. The last thing we want is to not be able to bring you the magic of Africa to your homes by damaging our equipment. So I'm going to have a look around for that white rhino bull in the open areas. No luck there. I'm going to track back just for safety reasons. Towards haste, our headquarters, just in case it does start raining, but keep our eyes peeled for that rhino bull. How's it looking there, VM? Because it does look like it's passing us here. It's coming down harder. communicating with my colleague there at final control because actually what I'm going to do while it is raining at Hayes oh, that rhino bull I would love to get that rhino bull on camera and I have a feeling he's around here somewhere so we're going to rush back there and look around a little bit more so while we're driving there I was looking in the distance and it's cleared up 
from where it was coming. It looks like it is heading towards the west, so hopefully not against my better judgments. We're heading back towards near where we were and do a little bit more scouring for Mr. Rhino Ball. Ask the Impala herd if they've seen a rhino around here anywhere. Another big benefit of having a private safari guide is that if there's any issues to deal with, you can just hand them over and you sit back and relax while the guide goes and deals with any logistical issues that might be or anything that you need to speak to the lodges about, the guide can go handle it for you. perks otherwise the depth of knowledge and really curating the experience to your what, you, what, what would best make it a life-changing experience for you I think would be the real benefits of having a private safari guide such as Brent or Gareth or our associate Yuka Otter if you are, would like a an outstanding safari guide, Yuka Ata is our Japanese colleague who is the only Japanese lead safari, lead trails guide which is arguably the gold standard of safari guiding if you are qualifications minded and orientated it is the gold standard she is the only Japanese person with one and so she focuses mostly on the Japanese clientele, but it doesn't matter who she takes out into the bush, it's going to be an amazing experience. Can you copy me? Ah, thank you. What's it looking like there? Is it coming down? Okay. Okay, VM just updating us on the rain situation where he is, which is more or less where the rain is coming from. He says, not too concerning as we speak. Hello Impala. Have you seen a rhinoceros around here? Lots of boys in this group. Lots and lots of boys. Big herd. Ah, and there's a, there's a couple of wildebeest as well. <laughs> what a treat. Connie there, confirming what I was saying earlier, she's Connie who is very fortunate to have, have had her out here for two safaris with the Painted Dog TV team 
and she says she's been on safari with Brent twice and he was able to secure special experiences that were not offered at the lodges. What not offered at the lodges normally, should I say, was great and amazing. Well, thank you so much, Connie. It's actually a pleasure and privilege to have you there. Yeah. It's starting to spit ever so slightly, but I carry on. I don't have any rhino tracks on the road here, so my guess is he's not beyond this point. That's just a guess. Kevin, Kevin, do you copy? Hey, Kevin. saying it's a bucky day. All the bucks are out. And the wildebeest, despite looking like a bovine, is an antelope as well. Built for endurance. That's why they've got a bit of a sloping build to them where the front half of the body is higher. They can canter along at a good pace to reach the reins. They can spot reins from a distance. Run off to go reach them to go get their sustenance. Okay, starting to spit down a little more now, so. I'm gonna have to turn around this time, and the double back that I was threatening to do last time is a must. Despite they're looking a bit goofy, the wildebeest is one of the fastest antelope in the world. If Google is to be trusted, which you shouldn't always, but I was looking it up recently and I know uh, kind of reindeer, I forget the technical term, is the fastest in the world, fastest antelope. The wildebeest is up there, I think in the top five if I'm not mistaken. You at home can look that up for us. Yeah, it's coming down a little harder now. So speed up a bit. Lovely and refreshing as it is. Give me a second to park under a tree here. I'm going to put my reference books into a plastic packet. And this beautiful acacia tree. I don't want my books to get damaged either. saying the wildebeest are distance runners too. Yes, they are. 
on the Great Plains, they'll see the rains and far off and it's like, that's where we need to head to and then they will go. Better. So where I'm looking at where it's coming from, just to our southeast, you can see the rain falling there. That's generally where it's coming from. But okay. All right, guys. Just got a word from my colleague who makes these calls and VM, we are going to close it, uh, the drive, and so sorry we had to finish early but I hope you enjoyed the brief stint that we did out here, out here in the bush. It was lovely having you with us, thank you so much to the pack and all your support and hopefully we'll see you again soon and if you're not a pack member sign up, we have some great adventures and we give back to conservation and it's a lot of fun and send us an email or download the app if you want to find out more. Bye!